the world and all the awesome people in the Google group. I just wanted to uh, put up a video today just to give you an update on what I've been doing with my Plague Bearers uh, and their bases and just show you a couple of things. Okay, so let's go! So here's everybody primed. I used um, spray primer um, or surface primer, this one here for the first time just to see what it was like and I'm actually um, quite impressed because I honestly thought that it would uh, fill in the details. The way I was spraying it, it looked like it was coming out quite thick and I honestly thought it was going to ruin their eyes because their eyes are quite small and and some of the lines are quite shallow. And when I was spraying it, I was getting really concerned that it was going to ruin everything. But it turned out all right, and um, I'm quite happy with it. So that was a an interesting uh, learning curve. So I also got my little nerglings, Prime 2, and a couple of maggot piles <laughs> uh, that I'll enjoy painting up. Uh, and the other thing I did was the, I enjoyed the heads of the uh, Plague Bearers so much I decided to put them on some stakes and make a little uh, mound of rocks that I could push the stakes into so that uh, it would be a little bit of extra fun. So those are just um, pieces of wire they're mounted on and I drilled holes on the top of their heads and then I filled the backs of their heads in with um, with just some filler. Um, I don't know what it's really called. Um, I guess it's to fill in little gaps and things if you make a hole in the wall or gaps between um, cheat rock and stuff like that. I don't have uh, green stuff so that um, had to do for me uh, and the other clays that I use are oven bake so that wouldn't work in this case. So I'll have to make some air dry clay with some um, gl PVA glue that will stick in holes like this and it's not very easy to sculpt so they look pretty rough but I thought you know what it's fine they're severed heads and they're plague bearers so they got a bit bashed up at the back who cares so um I really liked how that is gonna look I'm really pleased and the other thing I want to show you is something that most of you probably seen on the Google group already which is some maggots I made which I intend on putting uh, on the bases of my um, plague bearers um, so I'm gonna have some other things on the bases too like um, these little Creatures that I made, uh, and these, which are actually kind of like tentacles. I cooked these a bit long, so I'll have to redo them, but um, they will eventually be sticking out of the ground like tentacles or some kind of plants. So I made these all with uh, polymer clay and I will show a quick little uh, clip on how I did the maggots and the other things and um, I will put that in so you can have a look and maybe other people might want to use the same thing it's super easy and super fun and you can do almost anything and the colors are so versatile so 
Let's go have a look at that. This is polymer clay. This is a New Zealand brand of polymer clay. Um, I know that there's other brands out there overseas, mainly in the Americas, uh, called Sculpey, and there's another one as well. Can't think of its name right now. Um, some of the brands, if not all of the brands, including mine, come out with uh, different colours. So all different colours you can get. Um, matte colours, you can get you can get a translucent clay, which you can mix with colours to make them translucent, and you can also get golds and silvers. So um, polymer clay is great because, uh, especially for modelling uh, and things, because it uh, doesn't dry out. You can uh, model and go away for a couple of days, come back and carry on modelling again, because uh, to cure it, you have to bake it and just in a regular oven. So um, that makes it super, super easy to use and um, it's great for modeling, absolutely fantastic. Especially um, if you want to sculpt as well, really good for that. So how I made my little maggots is uh, I used um, some different colors. So I used uh, two parts translucent clay to give them a, a wormy, see-through-ish kind of colour and uh, two parts white and one part yellow to give them the kind of maggoty tone <laughs> and um, so what I got in the end is uh, some clay that kind of has a yellowy tinge. You can't see the translucent when it's raw. You can only see the translucent once it's baked. So um, I made that and then I rolled it out in um, a snake just to get uh, it easier to portion up because these maggots are really small. You've got to have like a tiny pieces of clay and I find it easier just to start with a little snake and then chop it into smaller pieces to make it easy to use. So I'll find my blade. And so I um, cut it super small. Oops. Hopefully you can see. And I cut it into the teeniest, tiniest little pieces. Like this. And they're only like, I don't know if you can see how big they are. No, they're only a couple of mils or maybe a mil um, thick. So they're super, super tiny. So the next step is to give them some texture because maggots aren't smooth and I didn't want to just have smooth little sausages. I wanted to have them textured because that's a lot more interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> I take my little uh, piece of clay and a paintbrush and I roll it between my fingers. Uh, sorry, it's not focusing very well. Until it's kind of a sausagey shape. Here we go. And then what I do is just roll it down the paintbrush and gently take it off. And it should have little ridges in it, although you probably aren't going to be able to see them in the camera. But I'll take a photo, hopefully close up, and you'll be able to see the little ridges in them. So, um, 
Yeah, that's how I make my maggots. And then I put them on a piece of baking paper on a baking pan and bake them in the oven for the recommended time and at the recommended uh, temperature. And then they are set and hard and you can glue them, paint them, whatever. So the way I made the uh, tentacles is just by using a different colour. So I'm uh, using this kind of purpley mauve kind of colour, I guess. And um, with polymer clay you have to work the clay a bit so that it becomes warmer and a bit more malleable. So I just warm it up and then it's... I'm sure everybody's made snakes and things with Play-Doh and that before and it was just it's just as simple as rolling them out with one end rounded and one pointed so that you can stick it in some polymer clay later on once it's been cured and I just make a whole lot of um, long straight ones like this and then I take my stippling brush and uh, just give it a little bit of texture just roll it with a stippling brush and then it gives it like little um, indentations all over it so that um, it's just got a bit of texture and a bit of interest and you can, I press quite lightly otherwise it, it will flatten uh, your polymer clay and then I uh, just kind of shape them so I'll Kind of shape them around and all of them will be different shapes so that when it's done it'll look something like this. They're all done and you stick them into a piece of clay and then you can rebake it so that the uh, bottom piece cures and the top pieces will be fine going into the oven again. So that's what it will look like but in a much smaller scale for bases. Now the black ones that I made um, like the slug looking ones, these ones here, they, um, they were the same, uh, they were just in the oven too long, so they burnt, and that's what happens when polymer clay burns, it like, goes this black, kind of pitted, uh, consistency, and it looks, I, th well, I think it looks pretty cool, uh, to be some kind of disgusting leech slug kind of creature. So that's how I made those ones. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, are looking forward to the May painting challenge just as much as I am. I just can't wait. Uh, this has been so much fun so far and I think it's going to be just awesome. Um, so I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye.